Okay? On the other hand, if I have something that doesn't just yield a B, but actually yields an entire state action, right? This thing knows how to consume a state and give me a B and a new state. What I can do is I can compute, I can compute the A and uh, my output state. That's, I guess it could be S2, I probably should have locked it S2. Um, and then what I could do is I could feed that to G. So I can take G gave me an A, uh, G needs an A. So I'll feed it the A that I got out of the first state action. And then I'll take the intervening state that I have and I'll feed it along. And this is going to give me an, a B and a new state. Okay, so what I did was I, I composed two state actions. So if I had one that was going to yield a, an A, I could take that and the output state and I could feed those that output state and the A into another computation that's going to give me a B and an S. So I just composed two functions together and did some argument plumbing. So what we, what we use these for is when we have, um, when we want to just kind of extend our context, normally you'd like bolt in a global variable that you're going to mutate or something. <laughs> um, if you don't have mutation, you don't have that option. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to plumb along a, a basically a, a configuration or a context. And we're going to take it into our function and spit out the new context that's been, that's been appropriately modified. We're just going to keep handing those hand over hand to, uh, to subsequent functions. Okay, and then that way we can retain the sort of purely functional aspect, but we can mutate some notion of residual state. Um, that could be the workshop or something that, or the workspace that uh, was in Seth's talk at the beginning or something to that effect. All right, so what can we do with these things? Well, by using flat map, we got access to Scala's uh, four yield sugar. We needed flat map and map to really kind of make that, that sing. So now what I can do is I can build blocks that look kind of imperative if you kind of squint a little bit. <laughs> right? Um, we're going to build a four block, and now we're going to read the result of our state. So x here is actually, I probably should have called it s, whatever. And I want to compute some function applied to s, and I'm going to put it back into my state. And here I'm going to yield unit, because I don't actually care about the result. So this is actually using map, and this uses flat map a couple of times to bind it all together. So we can see how, uh, in the end, this kind of looks like creating a variable, assigning it to the result of reading from a field or uh, from, a, from another value that I have in, in my environment. In this case, init is the only variable that I have. <laughs> and I can put to write back to it. Um, and so we can build little functions that even return interesting values. Uh, like here, I'm gonna, I want a state action that's going to update some counter in the background. And it's just going to post increment it, you know, C++, C++ style. <laughs> um, so we're actually going to read the current value, and then we're going to update the counter, but we're going to yield the, the old one. But uh, we kind of accidentally, our entire state, we, <laughs> the, we didn't have any room left in our state for anything else. It's just a counter right now. Um, so... <laughs> So it's only, only, if only we had some kind of tool that knew how to look in something for some piece of it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's enough clues in the slides to give the slide here to give it away. Um, what I'm thinking of. <laughs> but uh, so we could define an we can define an implicit conversion from a lens to a state action. We could take a lens and use it as an action that knows how to get some portion of our state out. So here I've got a lens that goes from an S to an A. I can use that as a state action from S to A. And all it's going to do is use the it's going to take my state and it's going to use my lens to read out the portion of it that I care about and return that as my result. And it's going to leave the state untouched. Okay, so that, that one implicit conversion now lets me use lenses like variables inside of state monad computations. Okay, but what's a variable if it can't vary? 
Um, so let's actually <laughs> give us the ability to assign to them by adding an operator to lens itself. We'll just kind of ignore the, the rest of lens. And say if I give lens a colon equal operator or something like that, that takes a value of type A and yields a state action. And I'm going to actually leave the A around just so you can see the value that I assign, just so you can do chained assignment and stuff like that, like if you want to play like uh, the little boys in C. <laughs> Not very jobby. Um, we can do chained assignment here. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a, we want a state action that's going to get an A out of an S, but it's also going to mutate the state. So we're going to take our state, we're going to yield the value that we were given as the output of our state, but the, the, the real reason we're doing this is because what we're going to do is we're going to take our state S and we're going to mutate it by writing an A into it in the place that the lens told us we could. Right? So now we've got sort of getting and setting from lenses as if they were variables inside of our state. So they're pointing at some portion of our state. If our, pair, if our state was a pair of values, we could use first and second as if they were variables. And we'll, we'll, we'll see a little bit more of an example, um, I think, by just kind of going back and revisiting fresh, you know, where we had kind of, you know, uh, consumed the entire state just to support one little counter. Now what we can do is instead is I'm going to take a lens, like as a variable, I'm going to pass a reference into this, this function. And this function is going to take supply, which is a lens that knows how to get an int out of my state s, and it's going to yield a new state action that's going to 4, and it's going to read my supply, getting an value x, and it's going to write x plus 1 into my supply. Again, we're, now we're looking really imperative. Uh, it's still purely functional code. We can reason about it equationally. Um, we have all of the, the sort of nice freedom from side effects. We can, uh, we don't have any, um, there's no magic going on behind the, behind the scenes, just a few well-chosen abstractions. Um, so this is sort of back to Seth's original talk of, of sort of fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh option on his chart of different ways to plumb down a little bit of context into, into a function. Is you can build a, a big composite state or a big composite environment and you can use lenses to, to peek at and write back to the portions of it that you need to change. So um, there, that's not the only thing we can do with a lens and state. There's another, there's another, I think, slightly more brain-bending way to, to put state together. And that is that I can take a lens from some bigger state down to a smaller state. And a state action that knows how to use just a little piece of state. And I can embed it into my larger state on that. Okay, so if I, have a, if I have an action that just needs an integer, if I just had fresh lying around, and I had written that long before, and then I realized I needed a whole bunch of other state for other functions that didn't care about it. Um, the the B, C, A, B, and C or something that in Seth's original example where only D needed something. Um, we, could, we could leave those in the whatever smaller state monad they were written in, and we could write D in its, in its full worry, and then define sort of this ability to focus through a lens and take a state action from a small from a small piece of state up to a larger piece of state, and it works just by um, if I have f as a where's f f is a, a function from state to an a and an s right. So if I'm going to get the contents of my lens here, this is giving me an s right. L is a lens from p to an s, so it's going to give me an s when I when I get. I can apply f to s, giving me an a and an s. And I can take the A, which I want to give you, but I need to give you a T, not an S. So I'm going to take the T that I was given here at the beginning, and I'm going to set the S in it. And therefore, I can use a lens to embed simpler state monadic actions in a more complicated state monad. Okay, so I don't have to have one state for my entire program. Um, and if I have... Uh, Lenses that know how to get you know, certain types of fields out of multiple different kinds of values, I can, I can program sort of parametrically and not really care about the